Okay, next on the agenda is electronic smoking device proposed ordinance, which is an action item, and we have, you don't look like Paul Cummings. <laughs> Paul, oh, here's Paul Cummings. Okay, all right. <laughs> Good evening. Sorry for my technical difficulties there. Uh, my name is Paul Cummings, and I'm the Tobacco Control Program Director for Alameda County Public Health Department. And um, I was here in early December, and we talked about a tobacco retailer licensing ordinance um, that included um, prohibition on the sale of flavored tobacco products, and um, set minimum package size, minimum prices for uh, tobacco products. And um, that ordinance was adopted by the Board of Supervisors last month. And this is sort of a companion ordinance to that. It would um, add an additional condition to the um, new tobacco retail license. So um, I'll sort of run through a little bit of the, the data about, um, or rationale for this and then uh, touch on the uh, provisions of the ordinance. Could you just tell us what the ordinance is supposed to be doing? Certainly. So it would ban the sale of electronic smoking devices or e-cigarettes um, in the unincorporated area. So it would not affect the use of those or possession of them. It would not affect um, devices that are sold by um, cannabis dispensaries. It, this is um, specific to devices sold by tobacco retailers. The, and those would be prohibited. We didn't do this last time? No. no. So we, we, we touched on it a little, but um, what happened was we were considering it, but we pulled it from the ordinance, so we didn't present it to you as something to vote on. So we wanted to come back to, to honor um, the, the Municipal Advisory Committee. Okay, forgive yeah. me for this. Tell me one more time what, what this... Yeah, would, why are we... Yeah, so it would ban the sale of all of the e-cigarettes that are not cannabis related. Yeah, let me... I'll jump ahead for uh, a second. I, actually, wait, wait. I have a comment about yeah. this. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's let him do his presentation. I was I, just trying to find yeah. out what the overall purpose okay. is. Well, yeah. I actually, I, respectfully, I would like to speak before that because I, I'm going to just pile on to what Dale is saying here. I think the agenda item was very ambiguous. I mean, honestly, I read the agenda item, and I'm like, well, why are we talking about this again? Didn't this pass the, didn't it pass the uh, Board of Supervisors? I had no idea that we were talking about a companion ordinance. And honestly, I think that this should have been in the agenda, that the agenda should have been more specific about what we're talking, what we're discussing here today. Um, and I'm just going to put it out there that as far as meeting the threshold of public notice and, and being able to talk, to, to communicate to the public what's going to be discussed, I'm not sure that the agenda actually meets that. Okay. Well, we can talk about that after the okay. staff's um, presentation. Okay. 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 Um, so... Um, E-cigarette use has been increasing um, amongst teenagers, um, so cigarette use has been decreasing, but e-cigarette use has been increasing rapidly, and um, as you can see, um, is much more prevalent um, amongst middle and high schools now than, than um, 
traditional smoking. Um, the, the term vaping sort of suggests that, that this is just water vapor, but there are a lot of chemicals in the vapor, particularly the stuff that gives it those plumes. Um, and um, we don't know what any of those things do when they're turned into aerosol and sucked into people's lungs. Um, and so that's a big concern. And unfortunately, we probably won't know what the long-term harms of that use are for another five to 10 years when we might end up getting lots of hospitalizations for it, which would be very upsetting. Um, so um, some people have quit using tobacco, using these. Um, but for every one adult smoker who switches to e-cigarettes, 80 youth initiate daily tobacco use through e-cigarettes. So um, this is a, a huge epidemic for, for young people. It's something that we've heard from parents, teachers, students, um, that it's a big concern for them. Uh, so e-cigarettes are defined as a tobacco product by the state. And no e-cigarette device has ever that is currently approved by the FDA as a smoking cessation product. Um, um, the CDC has warned against um, using them, uh, particularly for vulnerable populations. And what we've seen locally um, from the California Health Healthy Kids Survey is that in San Lorenzo, um, because it's done at for 11th graders, this, this survey, 21% uh, have used e-cigarettes. For Castro Valley, it is 57%. Um, we didn't um, have the stats for, for Hayward's um, um, handy, so because I know that, that um, Fairview's the students will go you, there. You mean the Hayward School District? Exactly. Yes, sorry. Um, and um, Additionally, um, so one in four teens have used e-cigarettes. 69% uh, of high, schools, high school students who purchased e-cigarettes reported buying them from the store themselves or from someone else. Only 6.5% purchased them online. So this is, the, the devices are getting out to the kids from the stores, whether they're purchasing them or um, it, they're shoulder tapping someone to, to purchase for them. Uh, so what this would do is it would prohibit the sale of all electronic smoking devices or e-cigarettes. Um, it would include the devices and the liquids. Um, it would not include any FDA approved tobacco cessation products. There aren't currently any, but if there were some in the future, this would not impact those. It doesn't regulate any devices that are used for cannabis. Um, it, this uh, ordinance would take effect in 90 days, and it would be enforced 180 days after adoption, so um, in the summer. Um, so um, because the, the board um, adopted the tobacco retail licensing ordinance, this would impact the 115 tobacco retailers. Um, and so the penalties that are part of the tobacco retail licensing ordinance would apply to um, for this ordinance. So if a retailer were um, offering for sale any electronic smoking device, they would um, be under um, these, these, this ladder of um, penalties. Um, and um, so this isn't the first in the nation or, or the state or the county. Um, so San Francisco was the first, Livermore was the, the second in the nation. Um, but since then, um, there have been a number of California jurisdictions that have considered this. And it, um, I'm not sure that other states have considered it yet, but it, um, quite a few cities have considered it and have adopted it. Um, so thank you very much. Um, any questions? And I know that uh, there is a question raised on the the notice, um, but I think there's probably any, there's <laughs> other questions on the similarity. 
Dale, you were... No, I don't. Thank you, Joel. Okay. We do have public public testimony, too. Yeah, I'd like to hear the public testimony. Okay. I have comments and questions. Okay. All right, so if there's no qu questions from um, the council members here to staff, I will open it up for the public testimony. And Yana Ruiz... Hello. Hello, Fairview Mac. Yana Reese. I'm a Fairview resident and also policy advocate with BASTA. And years ago when and, these... And if you could tell us what BASTA stands for. Oh, yes. It's Bay Area Strength Through Activism. It's a part of La Familia, which is a local nonprofit. Okay. Uh, years ago before these um, devices, before we had concrete uh, information about the danger of ESDs or vapes, I had actually suggested it to my mom for um, as a cessation device. And of course now we know that not only is it not a cessation device, but they're also very harmful to both adults and youth. And we could go over the data again, but I think it's more important that we emphasize that the greatest danger that ESDs or vapes pose is that is the pervasive misconception that they're safe. In reality, it's just a modern form of nicotine de delivery, one that contains more nicotine than combustible cigarettes and mo is most commonly used with combustibles, which is known as dual use, which is very dangerous. The threat to youth is their ease of accessibility, mobility, and discretion. You can easily hide these things. Most parents, even if they see them, don't really know what they are. They can easily be mistaken for school supplies. Uh, we can no longer claim uh, ignorance of this problem. We must act. So I am here to ask you to please do what you can to protect generations of our community's public health by limiting access to these destructive gadgets in disguise. And on the topic of um, switching from combustibles to vapes, I just want to say that that is not quitting. That is just changing your delivery method of nicotine. You're still consuming a tobacco product. It's just you're no longer lighting it. It's being vaporized instead. So that language around quitting, it's, it's just changing the delivery method. I have yeah. a question if I may. Um, sure. Now, now, there are those uh, um, that will testify that vaping without tobacco but with nicotine helps them quit because they, uh, they can phase out. Famously, one of Mr. Miley's aides has, has testified very convincingly to me that it enabled him to quit smoking by, by using a vaping product that does not contain tobacco but contains nicotine in, in quantities that he has control over and can eventually um, uh, reduce. And, and now you've heard that testimony too. What do you say to that? Yes, um, I think the terms are confusing. The term tobacco typically refers to the leaf, you know. Um, but in this case, yes, there there's no leaf compound. There's no there's no combustible part in the vapes. But it's the nic nicotine is the active ingredient in tobacco. So they're essentially the same thing. So when they say they've quit, they they're still consuming tobacco. It's just not in the traditional sense. It's, no, it's they're containing con consuming nicotine, not tobacco. But nicotine is the the main ingredient in it, of tobacco. It's, so it's they're essentially the same thing, but by m calling them a different thing, it's like we're it's it's meant to to confuse us. We don't want to argue, though. Shouldn't should we should, should, uh, uh, should shouldn't those who 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 want to have that option to quit have have it have it available to them? They should, but as we know, the, the vapes are not an approved me means of cessation. In fact, they're highly concentrated with nicotine. So a lot of the folks who think they've quit by switching from combustibles to vapes, they're actually consuming higher levels of nicotine than, than previously. That's why they're so happy with their new vape. And that's what's sad about it is it's taking folks who are addicted and feeding them higher levels of the thing they're addicted to. It's... It's intended to confuse us. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we have another speaker, Elsa Casanova. Hello. Good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Elsa Casanova, and I'm also a coordinator for Bay Area Strength Through Activism, which is um, a group comprised of Eden Area residents who advocate for healthier communities. Um, 
So you're probably wondering what more we could possibly want after passing the TRL, right? Uh, which banned flavored products for electronic smoking devices. But the truth of the matter is that youth are not just using these devices to consume nicotine. Um, they are also using them for other substances and not having flavors doesn't mean they won't try other nicotine products. Right. Um, according to the California Healthy Kids Survey, 23% of 11th graders and one in three non-traditional students um, in the Hayward Unified School District have used an electronic smoking device to consume cannabis. Um, I don't think I need to list all the health effects of cannabis consumption, consumption as I think we can all agree that um, you know, any kind of substance use is not conducive, conducive to a healthy and strong brain. Um, or at, especially during our adolescent years, right, where our brain is still developing. Um, what's more relevant here is that youth have access to the devices that facilitate the consumption of substances. A survey we conducted locally during the summer of 2019 showed that 86% of youth say it is easy to obtain e-cigarettes and vaping devices. By ensuring that these products are no longer sold in the community you represent, you will be creating a healthier environment where youth no longer see vaping as something normal, and you will prevent new generations from becoming addicted to smoking and who will not expect to rely on harmful products um, as a way to hopefully extend their lives in their later years. When it comes to our youth, we want to dream big and to create the best possible environment and society for their future. Um, and I, I truly hope that you agree with me on this. And I just wanted to say um, a couple of things. Um, Council Member Chen, um, I, I see that the agenda is ambiguous on the agenda item, but I also see that it has an attachment with the presentation. Um, so I think there was like plenty of information there about what the item was. Um, I will address that. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa. Yeah. Um, and then uh, to your comment, um, Council Member Silva, about you know whether or not adults should have the choice to quit. Um, there was recently a recall from the FDA for a an e-vape product that contained um, higher levels of nicotine that. Uh, than what was labeled on the product. And so, again, these products are highly unregulated, and so it puts everyone, including adults, at risk of consuming things that they don't intend to consume. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, any questions of the speaker? Um, if, okay. Maybe, if, if we, uh, maybe later. There's maybe something that comes up. I, I have some stuff floating around the back of my head. Just <laughs> you have nothing right now, though. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll close the uh, public testimony. And uh, any questions of staff? I no. No. Any questions of staff? Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to understand that there's... There's multiple initiatives going on. Isn't there some statewide initiative and it's around some are refillable and some are single use or? Um, that, that's the, the FDA. Um, and um, so yeah, the, um, the single use, the refillable one, so this is a, a jewel and it's refillable. Um, you can see it looks a lot like a USB right. drive. Um, this one would, would, um, there would be restrictions on. Um, this is another one. This is a, a Soren and, um, also would be, ref is refillable and, and there'd be restrictions on. But there are, um, ones that aren't refillable that are become, have become very popular. I, I've seen them at, um, uh, my son's elementary school. Um, sorry, I didn't bring one. Um, they're called puff bars, and um, they've become quite the rage in um, um, middle and high schools. So, um, and they would not be um, affected by the FDA's regulation. So, but this does. This would. This take would yes. All of those. All of these and. And the puff bar. Yes. So. I'm struggling. 
here. It we just, have people have other questions, so if you want to gather your thoughts while the other let questions. Me, let, me, let me just pursue yeah. this. It, it's a legal product, and uh, if we don't sell it, if we can't sell it in, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm looking at the retailers that'll get hurt. And, and I, I don't see anyone here to uh, deal with it. And, and I didn't have the opportunity to go out and talk to any retailers um, before we had this meeting. Um, so that, I, that's, that's my struggle. And, 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 I'm, and I'm, 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 I guess the question is, where are the kids getting it now? And will this ban keep it out of their hands? So, um, you know, the, the stats we have are that they're getting them um, from, they're either purchasing themselves, themselves from local stores or they're getting it from um, persons locally. So they're not getting them online. Um, is is what we have um, seen from from the data. So um, I think um, realistically that if these products are not sold, there will be fewer of them around, and that would be a benefit to our young people. That having them everywhere it makes it very easy for them to access if. There's fewer of them being sold, being advertised. Um, we think that that will reduce um, how many young people are using them and how many people, young people, are um, starting tobacco use. And I, I think you know that's what sort of prompted this to be brought forward was how it was impacting young people. Um, you know. Even though, yes, uh, you know, Bob Swanson and some other people have used these to quit nicotine entirely, um, but the impacts on young people is, is what brought this ordinance forward and what Supervisor Haggerty asked us to, to consider. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Because I have a question. I don't have a question. Okay. All right. Um, I have a question. What other... Um, Organizations have seen this proposal yet. Um, so the Castro Valley MAC saw this. Um, they did not support it. Um, it will be going to the New Eden MAC next week, and it will be going to the Sonol MAC later this month. Okay. So the Castro Valley MAC's response was to not uh, not to recommend it. Yes. Okay. Um, and also, why wasn't this also brought together with the prior um, prohibition that was approved? Um, it, what happened was um, it was a matter of timing. So we had started the process of taking this out, and um, at the Transportation Committee meeting in November, we were asked to um, address this issue as well. And um, we didn't have the ordinance in place when we came to you in early December. So we didn't have an ordinance that, that we could share at that time. Well, I think that there's some consistency issues here because arguably under the, or the ordinance which has passed, um, it allows for certain use, like the non-flavored things and, and stuff like that. And so implied in that ordinance is that it's acceptable to sell certain portions of these products that would go with this device. And so this proposal is to take the device out completely. Am I correct? Okay. Yes. And my concern and my question is um, there was the rash of kind of strange deaths associated with some vaping. And from what I understand from the public news reports, it was related to black market devices, 
not legally sold devices. I don't know if if that's a correct summary or not, or, or if you, if the your staff, if you've done further investigation of that, or there's been some determination um, by the investigatory bodies on that. But my concern also would be is by doing this overall sweep, would it in effect be encouraging that black market? Because that's part of the whole concept of decriminalization is then you're not making it profitable um, to go and, and sell the, the stuff on the black market, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I hear your point, and, um, you know, I don't have any um, data about um, black markets of, of these. Um, I, I would agree that, that what I have read was that um, most of the um, vaping associated lung injuries and illnesses were associated with um, black market cannabis devices. Um, and the only thing I would add about that is that um, there is no regulation of, of these products to prevent whatever happened in the black market products from happening in these. So it didn't happen with these, as far as we know, but that doesn't mean that something couldn't happen. But isn't the FDA going to, isn't this the proposal, is to do some regulation of these? Um, the references to the FDA, I thought? Um, I, I mean, our impression of, of the FDA is Lovish. that, um, you know, if a local community wants to do something that they should because um, the FDA is sort of a political football and hasn't been um, taking a particularly strong stand on these sorts of things. Um, back in uh, 2010, they recommended that um, menthol cigarettes not be sold anymore. And, um, you know, nothing happened from that. So, um, anyways, I, I, our thought is that um, local jurisdictions can make more of a difference than the FDA can in this. Okay, thank you. Um, any discussion or thoughts here? I mean, I, 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 I agree with you. I do not think that this notice is. Can I can I just thank Elsa and Yana for coming and it, it really and Paul and it's wonderful to see you and we really appreciate your time and we know that um, this concern is you know it's not reflective of anything that's being said but we are here I think that we have a duty to be fair I mean that's basically something that we all agreed to when, when we took this position. You know, um, I would have liked to have seen two sides. I mean, I know that I wasn't here for the other discussion, but the retailers were, were here, or was here, the <coughs> one retailer was here along with Bob Swanson. I don't know if they received notice. I mean, I'm looking at this and, and I'm wondering, did they receive notice? Um, so relative to Elsa, I, I, I think that you brought up that point about the attachment. Um, but I kind of, I would like to read to you basically a um, just small blurb in a training that we had just last week about agenda notices in the Brown Act. And um, this is from the County Council. They're saying agendas must describe each item to be considered in enough detail that a person of ordinary intelligence could determine whether the item is of interest. And so I think that there are some key words that you guys have brought up that I would have liked to have seen in the agenda. And one of them is that it's the companion ordinance. The other one is the ban um, and, you know, and the retailers component, component of that. And I, I think if we had seen that in the agenda, I think that that would have given um, sufficient public notice about what the item is about. So that uh, that's my perspective. I 
I know that this is an action item. I'm not going to vote on any, you know, I, I'm going to withdraw. I just feel strongly that we should not act on this well, and that we should give public notice before pursuing anything. So thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Well, rather than withdrawing, I mean, what you could do <laughs> is we could always make a motion to continue it and, ha and ask that staff re-notice it at what we think is more adequately to um, address okay. it is a companion ban and that it is a complete um, prohibition on all e-devices. You can continue the item, but it's due to go back to the Board of Supervisors on February 25th. So there's no time to... There's no time. Right. So the Board has it scheduled on February 25th. Um, and, uh, okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I just confirmed. Okay, all right. Um, and any other thoughts I what a potential motion could be? Yeah, I, I, I've got a couple items I'd like to bring up. Um, so I, I, one of the things you're saying is that, you know, there's no regulation of the content of the things that can be sold now under the current thing, which are e-cigarettes and then the vaping, yeah. the non-flavored vaping juices. Right. Right. So is, is there any regulation of the content of um, leaf products? Um, you mean like combustible? Right. Um, no. So yeah. they, they both have the same degree of, of regulation, but you're electing to only ban this product. Um, so the, the rationale for, good, <laughs> I agree, the rationale for um, prohibi prohibiting the sale of this product is the, that huge increase in, in youth use. And, and so what we had seen with combustible cigarettes is that the use was, was declining, um, but we've seen a, a huge increase in nicotine addiction amongst young people because of these products. And um, that's the, the epidemic that, that's brought this forward. So I, I, I get what the end yeah. goal yeah. is. But I mean, if if we're banning it here, um, I mean, I can just go around the corner in Hayward and mm -hmm. pick up the product. Um, I'm not sure what is going to happen with Hayward. I know that they are going to um, be revisiting their um, tobacco retail licensing ordinance that they adopted, I think, back in 2014. Um, and um, they may be prohibiting this. They, I know that they are will be considering prohibiting the sale of flavored tobacco products. So, wh and, and why wasn't this considered in the first one? I, I know you, you, you ran over it briefly, but it takes me a little while to absorb that. Um, a matter of mistiming everything. Uh, yeah. So, um, we, we initially, when we went to the Castro Valley Mac in early November, we thought that it was going to be ready to go together, and so we presented it to them at that time. When we came to you in early December, it was clear that, that we, this was, was not ready. Um, and, you know, and I, I know this isn't germane to, to your question, but I, I just, I want to apologize that that we were not clear on the on the noticing, and um, although it doesn't help this group, we will make sure that the other max that we are very clear about it. Um, so, I, so, my my apology. Thank you. So let me let me let me continue down the, the things that that concern me. So. One of the things I think I'm hearing is, you know, some of the kids get a hold of this stuff and then they sell it to their peers or give it to their peers. 
So have we, now that we're in the process of letting kids out of institutional environments because they got caught with small amounts of cannabis, are we going to start filling them back up because they got caught with small amounts of nicotine? I, I'm just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, currently there, um, there is no, there are no penalties for um, young people who um, possess. possess or are using um, any tobacco product, including electronic smoking devices. So um, that was um, removed back in 2016 from the state code. Um, it was thought that it criminalized the young people and didn't help them um, address an addiction. Yeah, so, but, but a month ago, <laughs> we could we could deal with the non-flavored stuff. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, you, you understand why I'm struggling here. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, I'm, I'm having a yeah. I'm having a really tough time, and I I was really surprised when I went through this because my first the first thing I thought I said, well, this looks familiar. Right? Haven't we seen right? this? And I started going through it, and I'm going, no, they're not coming back a month later saying. Remember what we said about the non-flavored stuff, Finzies, um, and, and I, I, April's point about the it, it, the wording yeah. not being clear was um, I, I probably would have only had to read it like twice instead of the four or five times it took for me to to, to have this. I, yeah. I could have called you. Yeah. Um, it, that, that's enough out of me. So, um, I would suggest, though, also when you say similar e-cigarette laws in California, um, you be a bit more distinguishable because arguably this list would apply to the most recent ordinance that was just passed, as well as this. See what I mean? Well, um, so, so there's some inherent confusion here. To make sure that are you, when you say similar e-cigarette e laws, and you've got the list of these cities and counties, does that include devices, or no? And because I think you should just be limiting this list to the devices, device prohibition, not belief or content prohibition. Yes, and and so this list is just those that that banned the devices. Okay. Yes. Um, so I don't know if we have a motion. If anybody's, <clears throat> Jewel, can we? Is it? Is there a procedure by which we could take no action? Well, we could recommend that Special the board meeting. not adopt this. Well, that would be taking an action. Well, that's on what's on the agenda. <laughs> Okay. Is is an action. This is an action item, and we don't have to adopt. We do not have to make a motion to recommend that they adopt it. Um, I mean, we could make, perhaps with staff's assistance here, <laughs> um, that this uh, be. I, I, my concern is is on the black market that it's going to encourage further black market devising. And also saying, well, it's okay to go to a cannabis shop, but you can't go to the cigarette shop. And then, you know, not every – it's kind of kind of odd in that situation there, too, because um, not everybody who might want to, to buy the device may want to go to a cannabis shop, you know, versus going to the local liquor store or something like that. Um so that is, I think, kind of makes an odd situation, too, um, that I think the board needs to perhaps uh, review this some more is it, or it, perhaps allow more time for the community to put more in, input into it. Is uh, it possible to schedule a, spe a special meeting between, between now, now and the 20th? And the 20th? No? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm no. looking for staff direction of suggestions of... What would be the intent of the special meeting at this well, point? Well, 
by the 20th to actually, um, like she said, have time to go over it. Uh, and with a special meeting, there's only 24 hour notice needed. So we could, ha we could actually give notice. We could have, uh, make sure that people are here that want to speak, two sides. We'd have to check staff it. schedules, clerk schedules, all that. I'm just throwing out thing. something. I can't yeah, think. We could also accomplish the same by making that recommendation to the board that they not adopt it on February 25 and further circulate the ordinance uh, for further community review. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, that, I feel like that's not the same thing. That would be my motion, I think. Okay. Tell us to say that again, please, okay. Joe. <laughs> Is is that the board not adopt the ordinance until after further community review and input? Because um, I think it would be good. I, I mean, we'd like to. I think would like to see this come back with better noticing and also um, to address some of the issues that we have also identified. Um, such as prohibiting it's okay to go to the can cannabis store, but not to the liquor store or whatever. So there might be some tweaking, I think, of that. Um, and also to address the black market impacts and any research on on that. So so that I think that would be my motion is is that we not that we recommend the board continue. Uh, this to allow for better and further community input to address the issues uh, we have identified. I second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I gotta oh, think about how I'm gonna vote on this. <laughs> well, if, yeah, well can, the, the can, thing is, I, I, I don't want to be in a position um, Where it sounds like we're taking a position. We're, it sounds like we're saying it's okay for kids to get into this stuff. No, that's right? not true. And, and that's that's the piece that I'm I'm no. concerned about because it's not okay. No, I don't think that that's what okay. it is. It's saying to continue it to allow for better community input for further modifications to address the issues. That's not saying it's okay. It's saying this needs more work and more community review. Yeah, I'd be a lot happier oh, if I could, if, if I had the time to talk to some more people in the community. Right, like, like exactly. Like I said, I, I knew what it was doing when I came here. Um, I, I knew it right after we got the email. But I, I didn't, I, I was unable to. Right. Normally, that's, I, I talk to a lot of people beforehand. Right, and that's what the purpose of the, the motion is, is to ask the board to not be taking an action on February 25, but to continue the matter and allow further community input. And so it can also come back, we would like it to come back to us to, to address uh, the issues we've identified. Is staff got, is that a clear enough motion for staff? Yeah. Okay. We'll make sure that the specifics you have said are yeah. noted in your right um, as it any, moves forward. Any further discussion? No. Okay, so the notice, just to be clear, so what you're proposing is that basically we're asking the Board of Supervisors not to act at, on February 24th, but for this to come back to us. Right. Okay. With, and with, with better noticing. Okay. <laughs> right. To right. come back to the whole community. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not just right. us. Right. We're the first, we're, I think we're the second. Second, right. Mm -hmm. Castro Valley said no, they did not recommend it. They took no action. Okay. Right. I'm okay with, I'm okay with that. So I'll call the question then. Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Paul. You're quite a warrior. Appreciate <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. Just want to th say, you know, I've been here all evening, and, and I really appreciate the thoughtfulness with which you've gone through all of these things. Thank you. So, thank you for your time. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you, Elsa and Yana. Yeah. Elsa, Elsa and Yana, thank and you for Yana, coming. Thanks, guys, for coming. And we should let's let's try and get together and talk offline.
and get a flavor for. Okay, shoot. Sure. We're at a public hearing. <laughs> well, no. You're, I'll just on, you're on the record. You're on the record. Okay. <laughs>